Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is December 10th, 2012. Israeli Special Forces track chemical weapons inside Syria. IDF Special Forces are operating inside Syria to track chemical weapons, the London Sunday Times reported. The Israeli government has not commented on the report. The report from London comes hours after Syrian opposition forces released a video showing that Syrian President Bashar Assad has used chemical weapons in the commercial center of Aleppo. The newspaper stated that the IDF operations across the border are part of a new secret operations to locate non-conventional weapons and to sabotage them to prevent their use. We have known for years the exact location of Syria's stockpile of chemical and biological weapons, an Israeli source told the London Times. He noted that satellites and unmanned drones have helped to locate the weapons. Israeli Ambassador to the United States Michael Oren warned Sunday that any evidence of chemical weapons being passed from the Assad regime to terrorist groups like Hezbollah would be a red line for Israel and could constitute military action. While Oren could not confirm recent claims that the Syrian regime is mixing and moving components for the deadly sarin nerve gas, he said that Israel is watching the situation very carefully. Israeli army vehicles breach Gaza border. Witnesses said Israeli military vehicles crossed the border into Gaza Strip near Khan Yunus on Monday morning. An Israeli army spokeswoman said forces were carrying out routine activity in the area. Eyewitnesses told Mayan, the news agency, that the vehicles came several hundred meters into Gazan territory and were scanning the area. Israel's recent eight-day war with Gaza ended with a ceasefire on November 21st, which included a pledge to end incursions into Gaza's territory. Israel has imposed a 500-meter no-go zone on the borders, but as part of the ceasefire agreed to stop targeting Palestinians in the area, Gaza's government said. When a Palestinian was killed in the zone by Israeli forces a few days after the ceasefire, Hamas security forces deployed in the area to make sure Palestinians don't approach the border fence. According to the Anadolu news agency, Israeli forces entered the Han Yusef region in the southern province of Gaza with two armored vehicles and four bulldozers. Two Israeli military aircraft fly over skies of Lebanon. Two Israeli military aircraft have penetrated Lebanese airspace and flown over several areas of the country in a clear violation of the UN Security Council resolution. The fighter jets crossed into Lebanese airspace over the southern border village of Kafar Kila, located 96 kilometers south of Beirut at 9.22 a.m. local time on Sunday, according to a statement issued by the Lebanese military. The warplanes flew over several areas in Lebanon before leaving Lebanese airspace at 11.15 a.m. local time while flying over the southern border town of Alma al shaab According to the report, Israel violates Lebanese airspace on almost a daily basis, claiming the flights serve surveillance purposes. Lebanon's government, the Hezbollah, resistance movement, and the UN interim force in Lebanon known as UNIFIL have repeatedly condemned the overflights, saying that they are in violation of UN Resolution 1701 and the country's sovereignty. Italy stops weapons shipment to Gaza. Italian police on Saturday seized the shipment of weapons intended for Egypt with the final destination of Gaza, the Italian news agency ANSA reported. The report said that the weapons were hidden in a cargo shipment and were found in the port of Naples. Local police confirmed the report. The weapons, which included a rocket launcher among other things, were part of a shipment that was supposed to go to an Egyptian ship which has been detained by local authorities, report ANSA. The container in which the weapons were found as part of a shipment of five containers and four remaining containers are currently being examined by the Italian Customs Authorities. Syria, Russia's red line. Russia sends nuke-capable missiles to Syria. 
Earlier this year, President Obama stated that seeing a bunch of Syria's chemical weapons moving around and being used would constitute a red line for the U.S. Now that there is credible evidence that Syria's President Bashar al-Assad has ordered the activation and deployment of some of his chemical weapons arsenal, Mr. Obama repositioned his red line from the moving around of these weapons to the actual use of them. Although some may view the administration's moving of the line in the sand as a sign of weakness, however, it is not. Instead, it is an effort to avoid or at least postpone a coming nuclear war between NATO nations and the still nuclear-capable Russia. Syria is Russia's last remaining ally in the Middle East, and Moscow has maintained close ties with Damascus since the days of the Cold War. President Putin expressed his concerns that Russian companies lost ground in the countries engulfed by the Arab Spring uprisings. Russian companies are being replaced by companies from the nations that backed the regime changes there. Mr. Putin said, That raises a thought that the tragic events, to some extent, had been driven not by concern about human rights, but a desire by some to redistribute markets. In an excerpt from an article by Professor Daniel Treisman of UCLA's Department of Political Science, he wrote, Western commentators typically attribute such behavior to Putin's personal paranoia or to attempts to rekindle the nation's wounded pride and assess Russia's superpower status. Look a little closer, however, and Russia's actions seem motivated more by calculated, albeit sometimes miscalculated, real politic than psychological impulses. First, strategic interests are at stake. In Tartus, Syria hosts the sole remaining Russian naval base on the Mediterranean, currently being refurbished by 600 Russian technicians after long disuse. To have to give up this Middle Eastern beachhead would be a shame, as far as the Russians are concerned. Second, although limited, Russia has real commercial interest in Syria. Contracts to sell arms to Damascus, both those signed and under no negotiation, total $5 billion. Having lost $13 billion due to the international sanctions on Iran and $4.5 billion in canceled contracts to Libya, Russia's defense industry is already reeling. Besides arms exports, Russian companies have major investments in Syria's infrastructure, energy, and tourism sectors worth $19.4 billion in 2009, he wrote. Russian officials have repeatedly warned the West not to intervene militarily either in Syria or Iran, although these warnings have largely gone ignored by the U.S. and NATO allies. It is nearly common knowledge that the West is providing Syria's rebel forces with arms and munitions through third-party countries such as Qatar. In addition, it is also rumored that U.S. Special Forces, as well as others, have been involved in the Syrian conflict since earlier this year, although mainly in a training and advisory capacity. However, with the increased rhetoric coming from Washington and NATO concerning Assad's preparation for the use of chemical weapons and how the West will be forced to intervene should this eventuality take place, helps to escalate tensions between the West and Russia. Add in the deployment of Patriot missiles along the Turkey-Syrian border, and Moscow's level of fear increases dramatically. Just hours after NATO agreed to send Patriot missiles to Turkey, Russia delivered a shipment of Iskander missiles to Syria. It's reported that the Iskander can travel at hypersonic speeds of up to Mach 7, which is about 1.3 miles per second, has a 280-mile range, and delivers a devastating 1,500-pound nuclear-capable warhead with pinpoint accuracy. It's also being reported that the Iskander's surface-to-surface -surface is capable of getting through any of the world's current missile defense systems, allegedly untraceable and unstoppable. According to a news agency for the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the reason Russia took this action is because of Turkey's request for the Patriot missile system from NATO. The report states that Russia has previously warned Turkey not to escalate the situation by requesting the missile system.
The news agency said that the transfer occurred when Russian naval logistic vessels docked at Tartus in Syria, presumably just this past week. The report goes on to say, Russia's delivery of Iskanders to Bashar's embattled regime clearly shows that the security and stability of Syria remains Russia's red line. It is unknown how many of these missiles have been delivered, but the numbers given are sufficient to destroy any Patriot missiles in Turkey, it said. The delivery of the missile not only threatens the security of Turkey, but also Israel which would have to recalculate its strategy with its defensive and offensive capabilities. As reported in a WorldNet Daily exclusive on December 5th, Iran's Islamic regime also sees the toppling of the Assad regime as its red line and has 170 ballistic missiles targeting Tel Aviv in underground missile silos, some with biological warheads. In August, a commentary from the same news agency warned America and Israel that further instability in Syria would spark a preemptive attack on Israel in which the use of weapons of mass destruction, biological, chemical, and even nuclear bombs would, be, would not be off the table. It stated that certain groups such as Hezbollah have been armed with weapons of mass destruction and that Israel will be targeted. Meanwhile, the NATO alliance said that Germany, along with the Netherlands and the United States, have agreed to provide the Patriot missile batteries, which would come under the command of the Supreme Allied Commander Europe. Germany has said it approved participation in a NATO mission to deploy Patriot missiles to help member state Turkey defend its border against Syria and will send up to 400 troops. In addition, the Netherlands will also send up to 360 troops. In an interview with Lebanese news channel El Manar on Thursday, Syrian Deputy Foreign Minister Faisal Megdad blasted NATO's move to deploy the Patriot missiles, calling the decision provocative. The Turkish move and NATO's support for its provocative move, a part of psychological warfare against Syria, Megdad said, but if they think that this, this will affect our determination to fight the terrorists, they are wrong. Understandably, no one wants a war, much less a nuclear war. But with Obama's red line jamming hard up against Putin's red line, there appears to be little room left for compromise. Then add in the fact that Israel has its own red line concerning Syria's chemical weapons and Iran's nuclear ambitions, and you have a recipe which could lead to the fulfillment of Zechariah 14.12. It reads, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouths. Friends, no one knows the day or the hour that the Lord will return to put an end to those who are destroying the earth. But we will know when he is near. All of the signs are pointing to the last days in Bible prophecy and time is getting short. Are you saved? Follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation with a sincere heart and you will be saved. It is my prayer that God bless each and every one of you with ears to hear eyes to see, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen.